God. And we sing, look what the Lord has done. Smoke it out of
faith, Lord, or he wouldn't have come and asked for prayer. And I thank you today that without faith, it's impossible to please you, but he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder. And Lord God, I take him by the hand and you said if any two of you agree on this earth as touching anything, it shall be done of my Father which is in heaven. Uh, and oh God, I'm asking you today to let the power of your wisdom and the power of your knowledge take over. Uh, I pray for the Holy Spirit to lead and to God. Uh, I ask God for you to shed light uh, and for you to enlighten uh, and for you to bring revelation this day. Uh, amen to my brother. Uh, Lord God give him a knowing in his spirit uh, that he has made the right decision. Uh, God give him light on the right path. Uh, oh Lord we come in agreement today uh, that you're going to move in his behalf. Uh, and Lord I pray that before this very day is up uh, he will have a sign from heaven uh, that the Lord uh, is moving in his behalf. Go ahead of him Holy Ghost uh, and make a way where there seemeth uh, to be no way send your angels. Lord, we loose uh, ministering spirits uh, on his behalf right now uh, to go ahead of him. Uh, and we thank you, Lord, uh, that the path of the just is a shining light uh, that shines brighter and brighter. Uh, oh, Lord, we thank you today that the way is made, uh, that the answer is here. Uh, and I thank you for leading uh, this brother, Brother Dion, by the Spirit uh, of the Lord as many as are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God and we release the anointing in His behalf. God favor Him. Bless Him. Oh God set Your mantle on Him. Oh Lord anoint Him as He goes forth and we praise You for it in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. I believe it's done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. One more time. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power. Glory to God. And His grace. Of angels' wings, I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. When I should feel lonely, oh, or I. I'm so contented that my heart is made glad. Oh, joy bells, you can be singing our ringing. And my soul is singing. It's so wonderful.
there, but I think we got it straight enough. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I tell you, God's good this morning. His presence is here. His anointing. I felt it when I walked in the door this morning uh, to start the early service. I felt the presence of the Lord, but I felt Him before I got here. Amen. Because I got up and went in my closet. And if you go in your closet and pray to Him in secret, He promises He'll reward us in open. Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? So when I come to church, it's never a question of whether I feel God or not. Because I'm already plugged in before I get here. I don't come in and bring all my junk. I can leave all that somewhere else. I come in when my mind stayed on Jesus. Come on now. I don't come in to see what's wrong. I come in to see what's right. I come in to hear from God. I plug in to Him and just, just bask in His glory because I know it's not a matter whether He's got anything for me or not. It's a matter whether I make contact with that, that open portal of glory so that He can pour. I believe there's a vein. A vein of glory that is always alive and flowing. I believe it's gold, all right. It's the gold of His presence. Can you say amen? There is gold in them there. Heels, hallelujah. I'm looking out at the very place where God is mining out some treasures. Uh, amen. You've got treasure in earth and vessels this morning. Hallelujah. There's value to you. You are more than valuable to the kingdom of God. And I believe the Holy Ghost job today is to dig out some more of that deep treasure that is hid in you. Praise the Lord. Treasures of, of darkness. That's what the Bible says. You didn't know they were there. Hidden riches of secret places. Praise the Lord. The Lord said unto Cyrus his anointed. And Cyrus wasn't even saved. He was a heathen. But the Lord said, Cyrus my anointing. I'm opening up to you the two leaf gates. I'm going to give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. How many understand tonight, this morning rather that the Lord Jesus has opened already the two lead gates. Glory to God. Grace and mercy are open unto you today and the Spirit of God is, the, is searching out the deep things Amen. to reveal to you hidden things that are within us. Hallelujah. Amen. And the mind that the mining is done within us. It's a greatness of God that is coming forth in this hour. We are kingdom people. We're people who are associated with the fact that Christ is here in His anointing and in His power and in His goodness and in His strength. Amen. We are not a people who just think we're hanging on hoping to make it. We know we've already made it because He lives, we shall live also. Amen. And we are a people of victory Amen. and of power. Amen. We're not a people of the headlines and the news reports. That's not what we preach. We preach the gospel. <laughs> we preach the word. And you say amen. And in doing so, we're finding out that God's a good God all the time. Yes. And that the Spirit of the Lord is among His people to bless yes. them. And that all nine gifts of the Spirit are working in the church. And that all fruit is coming forth on the vine. Amen. And that His life is in us. And that we are called to a greater works ministry and to have that ministry we're going to have to have a greater works mentality amen so we bless you for being here today we're getting ready to give to the lord if you'd be so kind as to pre prepare your time offering gifts whatever god has so spoken to you to do in this service this morning we thank you for your support amen we bless you in the name of the lord as you come and give this morning praise god <laughs>
Hallelujah. Amen. We're glad to see Sister Janet in the sturdy, Brother Michael, this morning. Sister Janet, you got something to say to us? Hallelujah. Well, just real quick, I will yes. say something. Amen. Amen. <laughs> no, I was just thinking as you were praying for this brother over here this morning, right before you even called him up, I didn't know you, uh, you know, that was going to transpire. But I was thinking about how, you know, the scriptures that I think one of Daddy's favorite scriptures is Psalm 32 and 8. It will show up. Thou, uh, you'll instruct me and teach me. Teach in the way yes, I should go. Right, you'll guide me with your own eyes. And I was thinking how that it seems like to me every single time, right before, God is about to either take you a new direction or bring a real breakthrough or release in your life. He sends a messenger with a message. Yes. A messenger with a message. And God always comes with an instruction yes. and a strategy yes. to carry that out. Absolutely. And I was thinking how that the messenger of God, the captain of the Lord's host, showed up for Joshua in the fifth chapter of Joshua. Yes. And he said to him, he said, See, I have already given Jericho in Already, God. amen. I've already mapped it out. Yes. I've already declared the ending from the beginning. From the beginning. But from there, see, he had to get a vision for that. Yes. Before he saw the fulfillment of it, yes. he had to trust the messenger and the, message. and the message. I think the, that both go hand in hand. Yes, that you got to trust the messenger that's been sent to your life, yes. the voice from God, and you got to trust the message, whether you see it or whether you right. don't. Amen. In the spirit realm, begin to grasp it, and once you do that, you 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 could have come across the finish line. Amen. You. Because Amen. once yes. it gets on the inside yeah. of you. There's no doubt about it, it's going to manifest. And brother, I just really believe not only for you, but for several people in this room yes. today. I just feel this so strong that there is a message from God of direction and strategy yes. concerning some situations that you're dealing with Hallelujah. in your life. Hallelujah. And I believe you're going to hear the instruction and the strategy of the Lord Today, glory to God, and you're going to carry that thing out. Amen. And the glory of God, I'm just going to prophesy Hallelujah. right now, that the glory of God is going to manifest so quickly yes. in that situation. Yes. Glory so to quick. God. I just feel a suddenly is happening for somebody. God. It is present in this room. I feel it so strong in my spirit yes. that somebody is going to have a sudden breakthrough and a miracle at least in your life. I'm talking about today. I'm not talking about three days from now. I'm, I'm telling you, somebody's going to have a manifest breakthrough. Yes. And, and God said, open your ears and hear the messenger Hallelujah. and receive the message and watch God carry out the yes. rest of it. Yes, yes. Say something to us, hallelujah. I uh, felt led of the Holy Spirit to get out Luke Ford Heffin's book on revival glory. Yes. And uh, I, I was reading it this week and I was thinking about what you said about uh, the dagger digging in and getting yes. all the dirt out and all that stuff out. And in that book, she talks about declaring and prophesying revival 
Jesus.
it's going to be past so there's no need to pack up and move. But I have been sitting there before with a blue, clear, totally open sky and in 30 seconds time, a storm shifted in there and blew us about off of that beach side. Amen. And that was not a progressive uh, operation of weather climate. That was a radical and a sudden change and shift in the atmosphere. And I'm telling you, in the spirit world right now, there is a radical and a sudden and a hard, uh, a hostile shift that is coming on the environment. Hallelujah. That there is something that is beyond our control. It's something that is so divine and sovereign and mighty. And it's, we were learning Wednesday night, it's something that's foreordained. It's already been set in place. It's not something God's just going to have to do for us when we get there. But it's something that's been preserved and reserved in the heavens until now, which is a time of restitution of all things. And the thing that it requires you to do is repent, which is metanoia, change your mind, get a shift in your consciousness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And if you don't shift in your mind, then you don't shift anywhere. You can be, I don't care if they make you a millionaire tomorrow, if you still choose to live like a pauper, you're not going to know you're a millionaire. I don't care if your business gets blessed and it, it, it increases 50% in, 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 in intake. If you still keep the mindset that you're just a struggling person trying to make it, then in six months from now, you won't even know that that increase ever came. You see these people that win the lottery, you know, and they'll do a show on them. And when they come out to meet them, you know, they're living in a place and it's overgrown, they won't even cut the grass. And they got cars up on blocks everywhere, and you know, and they win the lottery, and you think, boy, next time we see them, they're gonna really be, they're gonna really be straightened out. And then they go back in 10 years and do a follow-up on them. And the only difference is there's five cars on blocks instead of one. Well, don't shout me down now. The only difference is they took a little wood and tacked it on two or three ends of that same old place. You know why? They never had a shift in their consciousness. They're still poverty-minded. They're still struggle-minded. They're still, well, glory to God. And that's just one aspect. We could do thousands of them. Are you here? I mean, there's folks that are so sickness conscious that they can be just the most down person in the world. But if you'll slap them in a hospital bed and put an oxygen mask on them, they'll cheer up immediately. They're so, that's the truth. Are you hearing me? Well, you love me good, do you? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, uh, there's their folk that if God does heal them, we've seen it happen in this church over the years. They're so careful to let you know that it's just that, you know, uh, they're, they're almost afraid to declare that they're healed. Yeah. Well, glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's, they've told my grandfather before when he was on the money, he'd say, let's pray for you right now. They'd say, no, Brother Evers, wait. Uh, we're trying to get a check or we're trying to get... We're trying to get help, or we're trying to get wait till we get it before you pray. How silly to have a consciousness. And every one of them that ever said that died. And he did end up praying. He prayed the eulogy at their funeral service. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So you see, it's all about my perception, how I perceive a thing. I can perceive this church better in the dark at night than any of you. Because I constantly walk through it in the dark when I lock up. And so I can go to any room I want to. And as long as I'm the one that's doing the walking, I kind of know where to move my foot this way and that way because I have a perception of what this room is. You would break your neck. You would fall down. You would have to go slower. You would kind of have to feel your way. I have the same perception of my house. I can walk through it and never turn a light on. I, I, you know, some of the brothers used to come get me to fish early in the morning before daylight, and they'd just sure I was still in the bed asleep, 
at because there wasn't no lights on and then I'd come out, pop out the door all dressed and ready to go. And they said, well, where, yeah, you wasn't a light. I said, I don't need lights. I, I, I walk in there every day, seven days a week, all day long. I walk in there. I have a perception. Let me tell you something. We're getting ready to walk in such a kingdom realm with God that we, we have a perception. We know how this thing is to operate and to manifest. It's not new to it. It's time that we get off the milk and get on the strong beat of the Word of God. Hallelujah. Get ourselves stirred up. So that's what kind of what we were talking about and I was opening with the fact that we can even turn to the different levels of kingdom creation. One of them being the animal kingdom. And see that you don't have to teach a fish to swim. And you don't have to teach a bird to fly. You don't have to teach a lion to hunt. He's got inherent instinct on the inside of him. He's got a rhythm to what he does. There's a flow. There's an order. There's something God created on the inside of those animals. They don't even have a spirit, folks. And they operate according to that nature on the inside. They don't converse outside of themselves. They can't. They don't have a language to converse with anybody but their own time. And the only time that survival is threatened is when they go into bondage or captivity. You can take a fish out of a lake or pond that never needs anything done to the water and put it in a tank and you'll spend the rest of that fish's life trying to doctor that water with elements that will keep it alive when all along if he's in his natural environment, he'd never glory be to God. And yet with every one, within every one of them, I don't care how long they've been bound, they, there's something in every one of them that longs for a freedom and all it takes is a loose board in a fence or a hole just big enough to slip through and I don't care how much you think they love you they're going to get out of that and they're going to get oh hallelujah well he's made a way for us to escape corruption and lust in the world my God he's made a way for the eagle to fly he's made a way for the fish to swim I mean 10 million birds singing this morning at sunrise and none of them asked the other what key to sing here. They flow in unity. They flow in harmony. And when a man gets conscious of the kingdom life that is on the inside of him, he don't have to ask about healing. Healing flows in him. He don't have to ask about wealth. Wealth flows through him. He don't have to ask about his ministry. It'll just start operating. You don't have to ask about the Holy Ghost. Well, it'll just come in power and start flowing and operating. And so in order, somebody said, well, well, why did all this happen to me? Well, the same reason for it's not for, for millions and millions of people. There's got to be a shift up here in this conscious realm. You have got to believe that there's something on the inside of you that will set you free. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and of death. He is the vine, the true vine, which is the only vine or the original vine, and I am the branch. I'm not just received a word. I have the engrafted word. I'm of that original seed. I'm of that original part. Hallelujah. That part is inherent in me. It's indwelling in me. It's something I possess. It's something in the midst of all of my sorrows and troubles and the midst of all of the burdens and all of the things that I may feel I'm going through. You know, it's always I'm. And, and, and we're always locked in our world and what we're going through. But the truth is, beyond all of that and beyond all the veil of this flesh realm, there is a spirit on the inside of you and me that will search out the ways of God and will reveal feel how to live this kingdom life and how to walk in it. But in order for that to happen, there has to be an awakening and an arousal. That's why you got to have that trumpet in your life. You need blasts of truth to hit your life that just shake you to the very core of who you are. Make you feel like you went to church for the first time after you've been going for 40 years. Do you hear me? One thing we did learn, and I'm moving on, I didn't mean to review so long, but one thing we did learn is you can fall into a system, a church system, and operate in it and go to church faithfully and give your tithes and your offerings and raise your hands and smile and sing pretty and still not experience the change that I'm talking about in your life. I'll prove it to you. People who talk in tongues seven times a, a, a week are still broke and still sick and still depressed and still responding. 
because there's not been a shift. There's that. There's got to be a reformation. There's got to be. Let me tell you, in the dark ages, buddy, there wasn't nothing for any man except what came out of that old order, that that Roman order. They wouldn't even speak English in the church because they didn't want the people being able to make contact. They want. They they built themselves up. They chained every Bible to the to the altars in the church. Nobody had a Bible at home. Everybody was read to in Latin. All they heard was Latin. Nobody even knew what was being said. When it came to, to churchianity, all they knew was they went and, they, and what did it do? It got darker and it got darker. Artists couldn't even paint anymore. Builders couldn't even build anymore. You're listening to me. Craftsmen began to quit operating in their trade. It was the dark ages. Uh, men's knowledge was covered up. It was hidden. It was blinded. But And Martin Luther was climbing up those steps uh, where they said Jesus walked uh, and he was going up them on his face. They was climbing up them suffering for Christ. And the Lord supernaturally spoke to him and said, I never walked on these steps. Hallelujah. I never was in this place. I never did stand here. And Martin Luther went home and lit a candle and read the word all night until he got to the scripture that said, the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. And he wrote his 96 piece, went and tied, went and tied to, to the door of the church in Wittenberg, Germany, and said, We no longer believe that we've got to depend on a system or a law or a man or some kind of uh, some kind of concoction that they've invented to find God. But every man is a priest of his own house, and every one of us can have our own relationship and our own experience with God. And he started the what? Great Reformation. Brother, sister, after those dark ages, God had to rebirth. My Lord. That's the reason we have what what's called the Renaissance. Yes. Because out of those dark ages, you know what happened? People began, I mean, discovering things such as colors right. to paint with. Right. Mm -hmm. Ooh, hallelujah. Well, it's like a mystery unveiled. Mm -hmm. there, there was none of that. And then all of a sudden they, 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 they invented and found out they could put that color on a canvas and create beauty. Right out of their, right out of their cell. They, 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 they went on and on. They discovered. Everybody say discovered. They discovered the printing press. They discovered uh, the, the power of steam. They discovered electricity. They discovered all through the ages. They discovered. And all through the ages, if God has His way, men are going to discover, 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 uncover something, unravel something through ideas and witty inventions and anointings of wisdom and understanding. Glory be to God. And they're going to uncover and they're going to make it forth. They're going to bring it forth. And before long, you've got wealth coming back. And before long, you've got uh, dynasties rising up. And before long, kings and queens take the throne again. And before long, men are inventing. And before long, it's growing up until it's spreading all over the earth. Now, what goes in, par in the natural must parallel in the supernatural. And we've got a lot of inventing on this earth. Right? But honey, it's time for the people of God to start inventing and to uncover and to come upon some fresh knowledge in the supernatural realm. Are you hearing me? I'll tell you now, people are tired of hearing the same sermons yeah. over and over again, hearing you beat them up every Sunday, tell them how they're unworthy, tell them how they ain't never going to please God, but keep trying what you used to keep trying if we're never going to please Him. I'll say, well, I'll quit and go get drunk. Amen. <laughs> if we're not going to please Him, but I try that, oh my God, folks, we've lived the life of bondage. They've held us in that cage, oh. showing us something out there, but telling us we can't have it till we die. But I'm telling you now, the eagle is flying out of the cage. The bird's getting off of that little pedestal. Amen. That lion's going to break out of that enclosure. Hallelujah! There's coming a reformation. There's a radical shift yeah, yeah. that is coming on the body of Christ. Now I've done preach so long I probably can't read those scriptures. But I'll quote what I was going to read to you. I was going to read to you out of the book of Deuteronomy, the third, second chapter, the eleventh verse. And it says like this, Like as an eagle stirreth up her nest. And a mother Ego fluttereth over her, her young. So the Lord hath delivered thee and hath stirred himself over thee, 
Somebody say praise the Lord. Oh my God. The, 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 the verse before that said, when he went and found them, he called them the apple of his eye. And you know where he found them? He found them in a waste howling wilderness, in a place of barrenness, in a place of dryness, in a place of need and lack. He found them as the apple of his eye, and he kept them as the apple of his eye. And like as an eagle stirring. Stir it. That word stir it there means that, 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 that to arouse, to awaken. It is, it's, it's to give insight to. It literally means to open the eyes or to make them brighter and clearer. And then, of course, you know that when it says he fluttereth over, over she fluttereth over her young, you know that in the book of Genesis, the first chapter, the Bible said the earth was without form and void and darkness on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God did what? Hug, moved, brooded, fluttered. And whenever he fluttered, that which was chaotic and without order and out of balance and out of place and had no shape and had no form began to immediately take on formation. Glory to God. Everything that God awakens will come forth. Everything that God calls will come out. He calleth his own by name and leadeth them out. In, in, in John the 11th chapter, Lazarus was dead for four days and he called him and he had to come out. Anybody that Jesus addresses with that resurrection and that life will have to come out of grave clothes and all and be loosed and liberated. In John the 5th chapter it says the day is coming and yea now is when all they that are in the grave. All they that are in the grave. Now, let me just do a little bit of preaching to you and slow down because I'm getting excited and I don't want to miss nothing. But let me get, let me calm down just a little bit and tell you something. When Jesus got to this planet and began to manifest himself in the flesh, hallelujah, I want you to know he was the only man alive spiritually on the face of this earth because all in Adam all died. He is talking to dead men. Oh, there's a life physically. They ate, drank, slept, walked, and went to work every day. But they weren't alive on the inside. They didn't have no life. Oh, glory to God, on the inside. And when Jesus got to preaching to them, you know, in John 6, hallelujah. He, I get in trouble going down these roads. I'll mess up and won't get through. But he, he said uh, 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 that he had, he had multiplied the loaves and the fishes, you know. He had fed all those people. And, and then the Bible said they got in the ship. And neither the ship was on the other side. And they got out on the other side. And bless God, when they got out on the other side, there's another, the same crowd had, had went to the other side. They seen the boat there. And Jesus said, you don't seek me for signs and wonders and miracles. You just seek me because you got hungry again. You got, he said, it's supper time. And that was lunch time. Now it's supper time. He said, all you think I'm here for is to show up. <coughs> Hallelujah. And meet a need now and then. But it, it's, it's not that way, friend. There's a supply. There's more than just having a need met once in a while. There's a full supply in God. And if you don't ever get delivered from the needy realm, you ain't never going to have to be able to walk in the fullness realm. Yeah, that's right. Hallelujah. Some people think that's what the church is for. Is this all right? Just to be there when they need something. Well, what do you ever give to it? I'm talking to everybody. And people that's in other churches. What do you give to your church? You come in there, sit, sing, worship, shout, get blessed, get hand laid on you, get prophesied to, and that's the way it should be in times of ministry. But how many believe you, the body, has a ministry back to the church? Yeah. It operates by your faithfulness to come, by your faithfulness to give, and more than most, by your faithfulness to intercede to God on behalf of your church, that the presence of God will abide there, that your pastor be in there, will, 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 will always have a fresh word from God. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'll tell you what the way I feel about it. This will sound rough, but this is the way I feel about it. You know, people sing, sing out songbooks you never played for, stand on carpet they never help get, and get cooled and warmed by air and heat that they never have, and, 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 and then come, you know, come in and want everybody to just listen to them and obey them and do everything. They don't work that way. There, there's a body mentality here. We're all workers together. Every joint has a supply. 
Yes, amen. And so Jesus told him, said, you seek me not for the miracles that were done, for the power of God that is now. You seek me because you got hungry again. Mm -hmm. He said, let me tell you about something you don't know about. He said, there's a bread from heaven. And if any man will eat this bread, hallelujah, oh glory. He said, it'll do something to the inside and it'll satisfy something on the inside and it'll fill a hunger. And of course, they all started saying, oh, we want it. Evermore give us this bread. Because the, the disciples had asked the question earlier, Master, what must we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus said, this is the work of God that you believe on Him whom the Father has sent. And so after he got talking about this bread, everybody jumped up and said, Evermore, give us this bread. We're ready. Praise God. We're in the prayer line, brother. Get the oil out. Lay hands on us. We're, it's our time. I'm ready. And Jesus said, The bread of God is not in it, but it is He. It is He which was in heaven, but is come down from heaven to manifest unto you. This is the bread of life. That's what He said. The bread of life. And then he began to go in a long detailed sermon and said, if a man drink my flesh and eat my blood, he'll never die. He'll have life in him that'll never die. He'll never get hungry. He'll never want for anything. There'll be a satisfaction in him. Then he made it even clearer. He said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you won't have any life in all. He was saying was, if my word and my spirit come alive on the inside of you, it'll produce the same life. And so when he taught them that, they all began to rile up because they were caught in a time warp. They were still living in Moses' day. And Moses is unknown, and Jesus was standing there in the present day manifested, I am of God. The Word made flesh. My God. Watch the bread. Yeah. And they said, uh, wait a minute now. Now, Jesus, we don't have you to know Moses gave our, our father bread. And they was talking about manna. But they didn't even know what manna was. That's why they called it manna. Manna means what is it? Every morning they got up and said, give me a plate of that. What is it? Give me a, give me a, give me a bowl of that. What is it? Well, glory. They didn't even understand what was sustaining them, yeah. what was keeping them, what was making them survive. And the Bible said that, that man didn't eat angels' food. Yeah. It said it tastes like honey and wafers baked with coriander seed. That's what the Word of God declares it would. And, that, 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 and they wasn't even, David wrote that, and he wasn't even there to eat it, but he wrote it. He had a revelation from God. He said it tastes like wafers dipped in honey and of coriander seed. And man did eat angels' food. And they didn't even know that it wasn't about the actual substance of what they read. It was the fact that God had supernaturally opened up the heavens and provided something in their behalf. And they still, after they ate it on Monday, said on Tuesday, God ain't able. And after they ate it on Tuesday, they said on Wednesday, God is not able. And God said they had an evil heart of unbelief. And it cost them that rest. But let us fear, lest that same rest that had been left for us, we should fall short of it. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you just real quick, interrupt myself <laughs> for the second time and talk to you about one of these divine moments when, when, when God came and fluttered over me and gave me revelation. I was preaching at a camp meeting in Indiana and they had uh, morning service, lunch, and then night service. And we had had a morning service and I was supposed to speak the night service. And so after we ate, I came home and uh, I prayed for a, a little while and sat in the chair by the window in the hotel room, just prayed in tongues and worshiped the Lord. And I got a little sleepy. I said, well, I got a minister tonight. I'll just go over, lay down for an hour. I'll get up and get in the Word. And all of a sudden, about 20 minutes after I dozed off to sleep, I was awakened suddenly. And when I was, the glory of God was all over that room. Heaven was just all over me. And God said, set up on the side of this bed. And I set up on the side of the bed, worshiped him a little bit. I laid back down on my pillow, and he said, I want to teach you something. 
he opened up the Hebrews book, Hebrews the fourth chapter, and taught me for almost 45 minutes. The Spirit of God went verse by verse and taught me how to preach on the rest of God and how to enter it and how to experience it. And I mean, I had a supernatural encounter. Glory. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I had an eruption. I had a divine, orchestrated, heavenly moment. And so, I didn't know it. It just sounded belongs to me. But uh, I was on the, about the sixth floor, I think, of that hotel. And about three floors under me, uh, Sister Owens was staying, because she was one of the ministers in the conference. And she was about 87, 80, somewhere in there then. And so uh, I was up above her, and she was down below. And so I didn't know this all unbeknownst to me, but Frank, had, Brother Frank had called my cell phone. And uh, I didn't hear it. I never heard it. Never heard it ring. I was caught up in the Lord. I didn't know what was going on. I got up, and all of a sudden, I seen where I had a mess. I picked it up. I thought it was my wife. I picked it up. And I said, That's Brother Frank. I listened to the message. And he said, Brother Matt, he said, it may not be meant for you to answer this call yet. But he said, I was driving across uh, you know, over here doing my rounds for work. He said, all of a sudden, he said, I had a vision. And he said, in the vision, I saw you in a room, and you were laying down, and all of a sudden, he said, I saw the Lord take a big wrap box, just like a gift, and set it down <laughs> by the bed, and said, you leaped up off of that bed, and started unwrapping that thing, and tearing the paper off, and said, when you opened it, it was like God revealed a whole mystery. To you. Now this is all going on while I'm laying there under that bed and the eagles are stirring and the Holy Ghost is fluttering in my life. I'm just telling you God wants to suddenly come on you and begin to ruffle and, and stir and show you something. And so he said, but the odd thing about it is, the way he ended it was, somehow I got a feeling that there was like someone elderly near you. And he said, now whatever that is, I don't know, but I'll let you use it how you want to. Goodbye. <laughs> well, there. I love you. That's the way God will do it. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, your father said, now this is what Jesus he said, Moses did not give you that bread from heaven, but the bread of heaven is he. Yeah. Oh, most did give you that bread. My father gave you that bread. And you couldn't discern what you were eating. And he said, your fathers all eat that same stuff. And they're dead. They died in the wilderness from unbelief. He said, the bread of God is he which has come down. And if a man eat thereof, glory be to God. He shall never hunger again. He shall never thirst again. He'll never die. He'll have life in him. Are you listening? How I many know he wasn't talking about, uh, he, he wasn't just kidding. He knew they were alive physically. He was not talking about them being alive physically. It was obvious they were alive physically, but they needed something to resurrect on the inside of them. Yeah. Amen? And so the Bible said that he, uh, finally his own disciples said, we can't walk with him no more. We can't go with him no more. This is a hard saying. Nobody can't do this. This is impossible. And, and, and we're going to have to turn away. And Jesus had preached this message to him and told him finally to the 63rd verse that the words that I say unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Are well, you listening? He said, uh, the flesh profited nothing. It is the spirit that quickened it. And they said, this is hard saying, who can bear? And you you know, you think Jesus turned around and said, come on, guys, now don't be a bad sport. Come on back. No, he turned around to the rest of the state and said, you want to go with them? And they said, to whom shall we go, Lord? Thou hast the words of eternal life. The idea is that with a mother eagle having a nest with eaglets in it, and she gets on top of that nest, and she starts to move her wings until the wind of those wings stirs up and flutters over her young and wakes them up. Hallelujah. And when she wakes them up, she's got reasons for awakening. See, God don't never wake nothing up in you. He don't never stir you up without there being a reason. One thing you need to understand about experience and shift and change in your life, there is always a preparatory anointing that precedes the being in the major change. For Joseph's case, it was building the, 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 the storehouses for the ground. Hallelujah. 
See, Joseph changed the outcome of Pharaoh's dream. The outcome of Pharaoh's dream was death and starvation. He did see some cows get mighty fat, but he saw seven lean ones come up behind those fat ones and swallow them up until, and it was not the fatness that multiplied, it was the leanness that was seen on the fatness of those cows. And, 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 and somebody could have said, oh well, that's the way God said it had to be. But old Jonah said, it ain't got to be that way, Pharaoh. Well, there's a way to shift this thing out of the way, to turn this thing. I mean, we don't have to go broke. We don't have to die. We don't have to start. We don't have to lose this kingdom. Oh, glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'm telling all of y'all this morning, you don't have to be broke. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to be discouraged. There is a way to shift this thing. How come a whole yellow There's a way to turn it around. You need to quit sucking sour lemons and just sitting in your little lady world saying, oh, at least it could be better. Oh, if I only I could get that. No, there's a way. There's an anointing that is coming on you in this hour. You're going to shake yourself like Samson did and rise up and every old cord they tied on you is going to break off of you and you're going to get a shift in your mind. Jonah said, we don't have to die. We don't have to starve. And you know what caused him to say that? The Lord was fluttering over him. The Holy Ghost was, was, was awakening something in him. And that's the way it is in the kingdom. The Lord will come in there and say, He'll splutter, He'll stir up something on the inside. And, and Jonah said, We'll build us some grain storehouses. And said, Them seven years when God slaps it on us, we'll take every percentage of that uh, harvest every day and we'll store that thing up in that house oh he didn't just feed pharaoh he didn't just feed egypt he fed every nation of the world he kept the whole world from starving because god anointed him for a radical sheep hallelujah and, and, and this is the way it works all through the principles of the word of god you take daniel when he he, he that they were in bondage for seven years in babylonian captivity and, and let me tell you something they were pitiful. They hung their hearts on the will. They got the greatest evangelism and missionary opportunity that could ever be. They had heathen God worshipers standing on the banks of the Euphrates begging to hear them sing the songs of Zion. They had heard all their lives about how Israel sang and danced in the presence of the Lord and they wanted to hear it and Israel said oh how can we sing a song of joy in this strange land when we don't have any joy and let me tell you something folks they sat there and pined for they said oh Jerusalem if we ever forget thee that they didn't know that wherever God was that's where his presence was that's where his anointing was and there's people like that today. Oh, if I can just charter a bus to this town. If I can just shut out and go over here where there. Let me tell you something. You better find out that you can have revival right where you're at any time you want it. It ain't about the city or the town or the geography of the place. It's about the kingdom of God being manifested. Hallelujah. And so, so uh, Daniel, at the end of 70 years, you know, he got a hold of Jeremiah's prophecy. And the Lord said to Jeremiah, at the end of 70 years, I'm going to stir up. <laughs> I'm going to stir up. What I'll do is go shift. It's going to change. I'm going to show favor on my people. He said to Jeremiah, I said, roll up all them, them, them scrolls and stuff them in an earthen vessel. Get out yonder and bury them in that ground. Are you listening to me? And, and have you ever read the book of Lamentations? Have you ever listened to Jeremiah? I mean, he walked through burnt stone and rubble and tore down buildings and temples and whatever. But every time he'd get to the end of the chapter, he'd say, have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Raise it up again. And Nehemiah said, don't throw them burnt stones away. Get out them burnt stones. I'm going to rebuild something. Brother, when you've been plucked out of the fire, you know that God is able to sustain you and to take care of you. And the Bible, oh, I preach be happy. Amen. The Bible said, Daniel read where he said at the end of 70 years. At the end of 70 years, 
at the end of 70 years. Men try to make that whatever they want it. But I can tell you what God meant when He said 70 years. 70 years. Let me blow your heart away with revelation. You want a deep one? If God says 70 years, then it probably means 70 years. People get their self all in a stew and think that Daniel was trying to write the book of Revelation. He was not. He was seeking God about when his people was going to come home and be delivered. The Bible said he got out at the time of the evening oblation and began to lift his voice and seek an intercede before God. And about the time that evening, oh, an angel walked up while he was praying and touched him. Touched him. And then, and then Daniel sought the Lord some more. And every time he sought the Lord, he had a manifestation. And every time he had a manifestation, the Lord showed him the throne. Upon the throne was the Ancient of Days. The Ancient of Days said, Fear not, O Daniel. You ain't got to be afraid. If anything you're being preached to uh, uh, from the pulpit is causing fear in your heart, it ain't God. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Preachers, it's time for you to quit terrorizing your people. They need to hear victory. Hallelujah. You need to file the politics in the political drawer and get out the word and start preaching. Nobody won't like that. I won't have a friend in the world if I keep on talking. But I'm telling you now, we've heard all the politics we want to hear. We're ready to hear a word from heaven. I ain't interested in hearing what no man got to say to me. I want to hear what the Holy Ghost is saying. I want to hear what heaven is saying. I'm not interested in, in, in any kind of man-made attempt to make it better. I'm looking for a radical shift in kingdom consciousness. I'm looking for somebody to get up and say, bless God, the kingdom of God, hallelujah, is not meat or drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. They come if not with observation, but it is within you right now. And if you'll exercise it, it'll come forth. And so, i got to quit this eating time. But, but, but Daniel, all of these men shifted. The, the, the situation turned. The thing turned around. You can turn anything you want to around. But you've got to have this stirring, this fluttering, this brooding of it. Why does the, why does the mother eagle wake those babies up? Because she needs to feed them. Why is God waking you up? Because you need to get fed some spiritual food. That's where I landed. I got the landing pad. You can't just drop something in the middle. I have to find somewhere soft to land it. I'll give you an example of, of how the Lord will feed you. Elijah the prophet was fed of a raven, fed of a woman, and fed of an angel. He was fed of a raven. And so have we been before. And then raven will eat dead stuff. And, I, and I've eaten dead word before. And so have you. Praise the Lord. I've preached dead word. That's the truth. I didn't know no better. Yeah. I shouted and threw my leg up the air over stuff that wasn't no evil so. I just preached what I heard everybody else say. I went back and got in the Word and it wasn't even wrote like that. Hallelujah. Yeah. Never read it. Some folks today, they ain't no wonder they're in the spiritual shape they're in. They eat dead meat every Sunday. Dead. Dead. Dry. <laughs> I'll tell you what them ravens do. They'll devour one another. They may, they may not eat good word food, but they'll eat one another. If they get hungry enough, they'll eat on one another. They'll shout we one minute and talk about you the next. And then the second round he ate with, he was fed of a woman. That woman fed him first, that cake. But I want to tell you something about being fed of a woman. There ain't nothing wrong being fed of a woman. There ain't nothing wrong we're being fed in the church realm. God wants to feed the church. Let me tell you something. There's still a need consciousness in that realm. There's still, are you listening? There, there, there's still a, a feeling that it might run out. What she said, she's afraid she'd starve. She said, me and my son will die. Are you listening? And how many of you know there's a lot of good places preaching word, but they always end it by telling you. <laughs> well, let's move on. <laughs> 
They, they always end it by giving you, a, you know, I've heard all the calls that just blow your mind. I mean, the time they get everybody to stand up and you want to get them to love Jesus and come serve Jesus. So the first thing you do is tell them about a truck hitting somebody or running somebody over out in the road or somebody getting killed because they left. Let me tell you something, folks. Just because they don't answer your order call don't mean they don't pray to God. Just because they don't get saved in the way you thought they ought to get saved doesn't mean that they don't call on the Lord. We don't know when people call on the Lord. It's not our place to try to say if you don't come to mind you ain't got it. You can have it if you kneel down. My God, you can have it on a red light in Main Street if the Lord so wishes it to be that way. Fed of a woman. Everybody say a fed of a woman. But then Elijah went out and got under a juniper tree. And the day he got under that juniper tree, he met some beside a woman in a raven. He met the angel of the Lord himself. Who said, what are you doing here? He said, eat. He ate. The angel came back again. He said, this time eat this supernatural. What are you going to do with it? He said, the journey's too great for you. I'm fixing to take you somewhere you ain't never been before. And in order to do that, you're going to have to eat a food you had never ate before. And the Bible said he went in the strength of that food for 40 days and nights. So how many of you can realize today that God's awakening you to feed you something you've never eaten before? To take you by a way you've never been before. Oh, glory to God. I don't want to stay in the confines of that nest. I want to get out of that nest and look. I won't even put me on his wings and soar me through the heavens and let me see that there's a whole glory I've not even touched yet. A whole realm he's calling me to. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we thank you right now that you're delivering us from the confines of our own thinking. You're, you're, you're getting us freed up. You're, you're, you're hovering over us. You're fluttering. You're brooding. You're, you're flapping. That Holy Ghost environment is getting flapping around us and stirring up something on the inside of us. God, we're, we're in that nest, but you're calling us out. You're stirring us up. You're waking us up. We're getting on the wings of the Spirit this morning, and we're taking a ride in the heavens. We're seeing that there's much more to be possessed. Hallelujah. Much more to lay our hands on. And we thank you today that everything that we're looking at in this scene realm is subject to change at any moment. Glory to God. We will not lock ourselves in a prison in the confinement of the way it is now. We will not sit and become a victim. We will not hide out and pretend that it has to stay this way. We'll rise up in Jesus' name. We'll defy these chains. We'll praise you in the storm. We'll praise you, God, and we'll honor your name. And as we do, you'll cause a shaking in our life. Change will come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Change will come in relationships. Change will come in finances. Change will come on the job. Change will come in this church. Change will come in our ministries. Change will come in how we study the Word. Change will come in how we pray. Change will come. Will come. And so we yield to it. And we don't fight it. And we no longer want to play the victim. We don't want to stay in that realm of need and of lack. But we ask you, Lord, today to shake us up good. Oh, stir us up to the depths, God. And let us be loose from that small mindedness. Let us be loosed from that enclosed place. Get us in the broad place. Hallelujah. Put us on the high place and let us ride the high places of the earth in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here this morning. We love every one of you. We'll return back at 6 o'clock uh, this evening for our evening service. We want to let everybody know that we are having our Christmas banquet. Our Christmas banquet will be the 14th of December. And we'll start that at 6.30, is that right? Uh, 6.30, and it'll be in the fellowship hall in the back. And we just, uh, the church will provide all the meats, and we will ask you to bring sides. I'm sure they'll be fixing a, a sign-up sheet for you to sign up to bring stuff. But that will be on a Friday night, the 14th, at 6.30. So please come and invite uh, anyone that you want to invite and bring. We love to have guests, love to have visitors. 
we do ask everybody they can if they could give five dollars a piece to purchase the uh, meats and the cups and the plates and all and so forth and we thank you and if you don't have it you don't worry about it. you come right on and we got you covered amen so we bless you in the name of the lord we'll see you back here this evening six o'clock amen thank you again for being here Do these clips.